Yo, 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 yo. So, another topic ulit tayo for flow measuring devices. At ngayon ay pag-uusapan natin yung tungkol sa pitot tube. So, it is a device named after Henry Pitot, a French engineer and inventor. No? So, a pitot tube is a bent. So, since bent siya, it is an L-shaped or U-shaped tube. So, it is used to measure fluid flow velocity. So, take note dun sa form o dun sa shape ng pitot tube. So, siya daw ay L or U-shaped tube. No? So, ginagamit natin siya para ma-determine ang fluid flow velocity. So, pag ma-determine natin ang fluid flow velocity, eh, ma-determine na rin natin ang discharge or flow rate. So, the opening of the pitot tube is oriented into the direction of flow of fluid. So, yung isang opening ng pitot tube intercepts the flow direction. Ibig sabihin, kung saan ang direction ng flow ng fluid, eh doon nakaharap yung opening ng pitot tube. So, illustrate natin yung magiging setup. So, merong liquid na exposed sa atmosphere. Ibig sabihin, yung system ay open. Sabihin natin maglagay tayo ng L-shape na pitot tube at a certain depth. So ngayon, kung static pa yung system, ibig sabihin, yung fluid ay hindi pa flowing o wala pang cue sa system. So ang tendency by Pascal's principle, yung level ng liquid sa loob ng pitot tube, eh same din yung level dun sa liquid surface sa labas na ito. So ngayon, what if meron na tayong i-apply na cue o na flow rate dun sa system? So ang tendency ay aakyat na yung level ng liquid sa loob ng pitot tube. So, kung nung una ay ka-level ito ng liquid surface, ngayon naman ay tataas na siya at a certain level. So, ngayon, ang titingnan natin dito, ano ba yung velocity o yung flow velocity ng liquid? At para ma-determine natin, ay gagamit tayo ng principles ng Bernoulli's energy equation. So, mag-set tayo ng two points. So, yung point 1 ay yung point before mag-enter yung liquid sa opening ng pitot tube. At yung pointo naman ay dun sa opening ng pitot tube. So take note lang ha na magka-level lang ang point 1 and point 2. So designate na rin natin yung mga heads to be carried by point 1 and point 2. So ibig sabihin lang nito ay ano ba yung vertical height ng column of liquid na kinikerry o dinadala ng point 1 and point 2. So, sa point 1, so denote natin as H sub 1. So, yun yung level at point 1 hanggang dun sa liquid surface sa labas ng pitot tube. So, para naman sa point 2, so that's H sub 2. So, ito naman yung height from the level at point 2 hanggang dun sa liquid surface sa loob ng pitot tube. So, ngayon ay determine natin yung flow velocity ng liquid using Bernoulli's energy equation. So, ang assumption that the system is ideal. So, magiging work equation is E sub 1 equals E sub 2. At since nasa certain depth tayo ng liquid, if magsisilbing close yung system. So, i-consider natin yung tatlong energies. So, that's V sub 1 square over 2G plus E sub 1 over gamma plus E sub 1 equals V sub 2 square over 2G plus P sub 2 over gamma plus C sub 2. So ngayon, yung value ng pressure heads at point 1 and point 2 is being represented by H sub 1 and H sub 2 respectively. So para sa P sub 1 over gamma o yung pressure head at point 1, that's H sub 1. And para naman sa P sub 2 over gamma o yung pressure head at point 2, that's H sub 2. At since nasa isang level naman, uh, points 1 and 2, ay wala na tayong consider dito na elevation head. So, cancel out na natin yung values ng Z sub 1 and Z sub 2 kasi yun ay magiging 0. At last, ay tingnan naman natin yung velocity head at point 2. At dahil intercepted o nakaharap yung opening ng P2 tube at point 2 dun sa flow direction, eh i-interrupt o pipigilan nito yung velocity dun sa point na yun. So, ang assumption at point 2, ang magiging velocity o yung V sub 2 is 0. At yung tawag natin dun sa point na to o sa point 2 is stagnation point. At gaya dun sa discussion natin regarding hydraulic and energy grade line ang tawag din natin sa pitot tube 
is a stagnation tube. So, maging equation na would be b sub 1 square plus h sub 1 equals h sub 2. So, ngayon, lipat natin yung h sub 1 from the left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side of the equation. Para ang nasa left-hand side of the equation is the velocity since ang kailangan nating i-compute dito ay yung value ng velocity. So, the equation would become p sub 1 square over 2g equals h sub 2 minus h sub 1. At since kailangan natin i-compute yung value ng velocity, eh, i-multiply natin both sides by 2g. Ngayon naman ay designate natin yung difference in height between h sub 2 and h sub 1. So, i-denote natin siya as h. So, ito yung height from the liquid surface sa labas ng pitot tube hanggang dun sa liquid surface sa loob ng pito tube. So, yung magiging working equation na would be V sub 1 square equals 2GH. So, para matanggalan natin yung exponent na 2, pwede nating exponentiate both sides by 1 half o pwede nating square root yung both sides of the equation. So, that would become V sub 1 is equal to the square root of 2GH. So, kung papansin nyo, ang nag-dictate dun sa value ng velocity is yung h. So, nire-represent dun sa reading ng pitot tube yung velocity head sa system. At ihabol ko lang na since wala tayong kinonsider na head loss dun sa system o yung system ay ideal, yung na-compute natin na value ng velocity which is the square root of 2gh is theoretical velocity o v sub t. So ngayon, ay gawin naman natin close yung system. So meron ulit flowing liquid. Say, nagpo-flow yung liquid sa loob ng isang closed pipeline. So ngayon, dalawang tube na yung install natin sa system. So yung una, yung pang-measure natin ng pressure, which is piezometer. Pangalawa naman, is yung pang-measure natin ng velocity head, which is pitot tube. At kung maalala nyo lang na ang piezometer ay hindi natin na extend yung opening niya sa loob ng pipeline. So, hanggang dun lang siya sa wall ng pipeline na mag extend sa labas at sa upper part ng pipeline. So, ang magiging reference streamline natin ay sa center line ng pipe. So, dito yung center ng flow ng fluid. So, yung magiging reading from the center line of the pipe o yun, sa center line ng flow hanggang dun sa surface ng liquid sa loob ng piezometer represents the pressure head of the liquid or P over gamma. So, para naman dun sa L-shaped na pitot tube, I expect na natin na mas mataas yung level ng surface ng liquid sa loob ng pitot tube compared dun sa surface ng liquid sa loob ng piezometer. So, kung ipaproject natin yung level ng liquid surface sa loob ng piezometer, Hanggang sa pitot tube, eh dito rin halos yung level ng pressure dun sa pitot tube. So yung difference in level between dun sa liquid surface sa loob ng piezometer at dun sa liquid surface sa loob ng pitot tube represents the velocity head of the flow. So kaiba to dun sa una nating example. Knowing na dun sa una nating example ay open yung system, meaning yung upper part nung liquid surface is exposed sa atmosphere dito naman ay close yung ating system kaya makukulong talaga yung pressure at magkakaroon talaga ng reading sa piezometer so derive further pa natin yung posible pa nating magamit na formula para sa pitot tube so gaya nga dun sa nabanggit natin sa definition it's either L-shape yung pitot tube or U-shape yung pitot tube so, kapag ka U-shape yung pitot tube, eh, pwede natin siyang i-correlate o ihalintulad sa function ng manometer. So, same din sa manometer, meron din tayong co-consider na gauge liquid dun sa loob ng U-shape na pitot tube. Kaya lang, yung isang opening nito ay nakabend din na L-shape. No? At yung opening is facing or intercepting the direction of flow of the liquid. So ngayon, kailangan nating computein yung velocity dun sa system. So nai-designate na natin yung points, no? So yung point 1 ay located sa center line ng pipe at nakatapat ang point 1 dun sa left part na opening ng pitot tube. So yung point 2 naman ay nai-designate natin 
dun sa stagnation point o dun sa opening facing the flow direction. So, ganun para yung derivation. Assume natin that the system is ideal. So, that will become E sub 1 is equal to E sub 2. At since close yung system, may involve yung tatlong energies dito. So, yung equation would be V sub 1 square over 2G plus P sub 1 over gamma plus E sub 1 equals V sub 2 square over 2G plus P sub 2 over gamma plus C sub 2. At since nasa isang level naman, uh, point 0.1 and point 0.2, pwedeng i-cancel out na natin yung value ng Z sub 1 and Z sub 2. Kasi Z sub 2 minus Z sub 1 is also equal to 0. At since yung point 0.2 is at stagnation point, so yung velocity at point 0.2 would be 0. So ngayon, ang magiging equation na would be V sub 1 square over 2G equals P sub 2 over gamma minus P sub 1 over gamma. At para magkaroon tayo ng significant na function dito, so pagsamay na natin yung P sub 2 at P sub 1. So the equation would become V sub 1 square over 2G equals P sub 2 minus P sub 1 over gamma. So ngayon, since may may involve dito na gauge liquid, so i-denote na natin as gamma sub F, yung specific weight ng liquid na flowing dun sa pipeline. At i-denote naman natin na gamma sub G yung specific weight ng gauge liquid. So ngayon, familiar tong P sub 2 minus P sub 1. No? This is the difference in pressure between point 0.2 and point 0.1. Ngayon, since nagmisto lang manometer yung P2 tube, ay eh, makocompute natin yung value ng P sub 2 minus P sub 1 o delta P. So ngayon, ay eh, compute natin yung delta P o yung P sub 2 minus P sub 1 using the rules on calculating the difference in pressure using manometer. So yung magiging working equation natin would be P sub 2. Doon tayo magsisimula ng computation natin since P sub 2 yung positive dun sa create natin na function dun sa equation. Plus the summation of all the pressures at manometer or summation of P sub M equals P sub 1. So same pa din yung gagamitin natin sa in conventions. So kapag ka ang trace natin dun sa manometer is going down, ang operation natin would be plus or positive. So kapag ka ang trace naman natin is going up, magiging operation natin would be minus or negative. So, take note lang ah, na mas bababa talaga yung level dun sa right side ng pitot tube. Kasi nga, ang i-receive ng pitot tube ay hindi lang yung pressure dun sa system, kundi pati yung velocity. So, the equation would become P sub 2 plus, at since kailangan natin ng mga liquid heights sa pitot tube, para magamit natin sa formula, since ang formula for pressure is gamma H. So, i-denote natin na yung height from point 2 hanggang dun sa interface ng gauge liquid at no main liquid natin is Y. Yung deflection created ay i-denote natin as H and the height at the interface between the gauge liquid and the main liquid up to point 1 is X. So, ulitin ko, P sub 2 so plus, since pababa yung sa point 2 hanggang dun sa interface, so that's gamma sub F times Y. So ngayon, mag-skip na tayo dun sa part ng deflection dun sa left side. So that's minus, since pataas na yung trace natin. So that's minus gamma sub G, or the specific weight of the gauge liquid times H, so akit pa tayo, minus gamma sub F times X. So, that is equal to P sub 2. So, ngayon, pagsamahin na natin yung P sub 2 and P sub 1. So, lipat ko sa left-hand side of the equation yung P sub 2 minus P sub 1. So, that's P sub 2 minus P sub 1 is equal to gamma sub G times H plus gamma sub F times X minus gamma sub F times... So, kung mapapansin nyo, ang value ng Y ay equivalent din sa x plus h. So, ginawa ko to para ma-reduce pa natin yung variable at para may ma-cancel out pa tayo dun sa equation. Kapag dinistribute natin, that's p sub 2 minus p sub 1 equals gamma sub g times h plus gamma sub f times x minus gamma sub f times x minus gamma sub f times h. 
So, kung papansin nyo, makakancel out na natin dito yung gamma sub f times x minus gamma sub f times x. Kasi yun ay magiging 0 na. At ang magiging value na ng delta p or p sub 2 minus p sub 1 ay gamma sub g times h minus gamma sub f times h. So, balikan natin yung ating naging working equation. So, yung working equation natin is v sub 1 square over 2g equals p sub 2 minus p sub 1 over gamma sub f. At since ang value ng p sub 2 minus p sub 1 is gamma sub g times h minus gamma sub f times h, so substitute na natin yung p sub 2 minus p sub 1 dun sa ating working equation. So that would become v sub 1 square over 2g equals gamma sub g times h minus gamma sub f times h over gamma sub f. So, may common function dito sa right hand side of the equation, which is gamma. Pero ang recall natin, that the gamma of a fluid is equal to the specific gravity of that fluid times the gamma of water. So, ang mangyayari, kung sa substitute natin itong equivalent ng gamma, ang maging equation is V sub 1 square over 2G equals the quantity of the specific gravity of the gauge liquid or SG sub G times the specific weight of water or gamma sub W minus the specific gravity of the main fluid times the specific weight of water or gamma sub W times H. So kung papansin nyo, ay nilabas na natin yung H since common naman siya dun sa dalawang functions. All over SG sub F times the specific weight of water. At since common term naman dun sa numerator, yung gamma sub W, ay pwede natin siyang ilabas dun sa parenthesis. So, mangyayari, makakancel out na natin yung specific weight of water or gamma sub W since common yon sa numerator and sa denominator. So, the equation would become V sub 1 square over 2G equals the quantity of SG sub G minus SG sub F times H over SG sub F. At since kailangan natin computein dito yung value ng velocity or V sub 1, so pwede natin i-multiply both sides by 2G. So may equation na would be V sub 1 square equals 2G times the quantity of SG sub G minus SG sub F times H over SG sub F. At since naka-square pa yung Yung V sub 1 ay eh, pwede natin exponentiate both sides by 1 half o kunin natin yung square root on the both sides of the equation. So the equation would become V sub 1 is equal to the square root of 2G times the quantity of SG sub G minus SG sub F times H all over SG sub F. At since wala tayong consider dito na head loss, pinaderive natin dito na formula is formula for theoretical velocity. So, take note lang din that H is the deflection of the gauge liquid at manometer or at the pitot tube. So, yung value ng H ay kaiba dun sa ginamit natin kanina na H para sa V is equal to the square root of 2GH. So, in this case, sa formula na to, H is the deflection of the gauge liquid at manometer or at the pitot tube. So, if the value of the actual velocity is V sub A is equal to C sub B or the coefficient of velocity times V sub T or the theoretical velocity, then V sub A or the actual velocity in this case will be C sub B times the square root of 2G times the quantity of SG sub G minus SG sub F times H all over SG sub F. So, pwede natin gamitin itong formulang to kung ang pitot tube is U-shape. No? So, kaiba dun sa example natin kanina. For L-shape pitot tube. So, yun lamang. At sana may natutunan kayo. See you sa next video. Thank you so much.